Hey YouTube, Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, today I want to speak with you a little bit about power heads. And uh, I use uh, a few power heads in my tanks. And uh, if you're in the market for a power head, or if you've considered using one, or even if you are using one, maybe these tips will come in handy for you. Uh, in the tank behind me, in this 150, I am using a, uh, a high door uh, generation three power head. This power head is considered sort of mid-range. It's a very high quality. It's very, very quiet. You'd have to really um, look at it to really know it's on because it has no vibration, no sound. And yet it's not really the most top quality. It's very good quality, but you could get into things like Ecotech and Geyer and uh, things like this. You could pay two, three hundred dollars for a power head power heads with remote control, things of this nature. Uh, if I had a salt tank with a lot of uh, coral, uh, anemones, things of this nature that require tremendous amounts of very well controlled uh, water movement, uh, alternating water movement throughout the day, I would certainly consider getting one of those more expensive units. But for what I'm doing here in the tank behind me, in the 150, the uh, high door, as you can see here, is positioned in the tank to move water from one side of the tank uh, to the filter intakes. On, the, uh, on this tank I have of course a uh, sump system and um, with an overflow box and I have a Sunsun 704B and an intake that is hidden behind the overflow box. So the purpose of that power head is to move water towards the filter intakes. Now, if we look at the uh, power head I'm using on the 100 acrylic, you'll see that um, the application and the purpose there is slightly different. There I am also moving water towards the intakes of the uh, Fluval FX6, but also what I'm doing is I am creating surface tension breakup. Uh, that is to add oxygen to the tank because as that surface tension breaks up, uh, CO2, bad gas escapes and uh, oxygen gets in. Now I'm getting some of that from the algae scrubber, the, the bubbles of the algae scrubber, but for the amount of fish I have in this tank, I need a lot of oxygen. The output of the uh, Fluval FX6 also breaks up surface tension, and I have a smaller uh, power head on the left side of this tank and that one is helping to create a circular motion of the water when the power heads are running. The larger power head in the 100 is on a timer, uh, very much for the same reasons that the one on the 150 is on a timer. I don't want the fish pushed around too much for uh, you know 24 seven, especially at night when I turn the lights off and they're sleeping, the power heads, um, the larger power heads are off and that way things are pretty calm when they're sleeping. So, um, in my case, uh, I have a um, moderate to higher end power head in the case of the Hydor, and um, I have a what you would consider a low end bargain basement Sun Sun, uh, a pair of Sun Suns in the uh, in the 100. Uh, both of them are doing a good job. Uh, the I haven't had any problems with either one of them, and uh, the Sun Suns are maybe a little bit slightly noisier but you'd have to uh, kind of put your ear to the tank to tell the difference. Uh, but at any rate, surface tension breakup or water movement towards uh, filter intakes, those are the purposes uh, that I have for using power heads. I wanna hear from you. Do you use a power head? What do you use? What type of power head? How do you like it? Are you happy? Do you think it was a good, a good bargain? Share your thoughts below. Let me know uh, why and how you're using them. And uh, I thank you very much for tuning in. And I hope this helps you in your application and use of a powerhead in your aquarium. All right? That's it for me. Thank you so much.